What's going on, Tamers? Whew, it's been a week, man. Uh, work, YouTube videos, planning trip to Europe, uh, went rock climbing, did boxing twice. Big fella is tired. <laughs> there ain't no bones about it. And I know that if you're a Digimon card game player over in the West, you are tired too. Of all these delays, man, what is happening? My heart goes out to all the folks in North America who are getting the EX7 set one uh, week late as a result of the delays that they posted up on their Twitter account, I think, uh, a couple days ago. But man, I gotta say, after hearing what's happened in the UK, in Brazil, shout out to Lord Seiji down there, and now North America, as well as some of the stories I've heard from past sets, Bandai's gotta get this thing ironed out. We've got simultaneous world release coming up next year, and if they plan to make that a real thing. Like they've got to get these problems like figured out in ASAP. Actually, while we're on the subject of EX7 Sijuan Liberator, let's talk about a couple of the cards from that set. We got our hands on that set a couple of months back over here in Asia, and it was notably underpowered compared to some of the previous sets released before it. It felt like with Digimon Liberator being a new IP for the Digimon franchise as a whole, and the news of Fogamon and Syndromon started X release around the same time as that EX7 set, Feels like Bandai was trying to kind of reset power or introduce people into the game with a simpler set of cards than before. To be fair though, knowing that the Digimon Liberator comic puts the card game at its forefront for the story, and some of the leaks that we have of the upcoming box releases in the future, we know that this is not the last time we're going to see the Digimon Liberator cards. So that puts EX7 in a really weird place where we're getting the beginning support for a lot of decks, but we don't know what the end result of them is going to look like. So it really feels like EX7 is an investment set more than anything else. And so now with all that preamble loaded into your brain and you being primed, I want to talk about what my top 5 cards are for this set to grab when it releases. A little bit of a forewarning, a lot of the cards in EX7 thematically fit together with their associated decks pretty tightly, and uh, it's really hard to grab any like generically good cards. There are a couple, we'll talk about them of course, uh, Shoto Kozama. I do want to mention that the way that I came up with this list is a very highly sophisticated and complex method. It's vibes. It's just vibes, really. <laughs> Keep in mind, this list is going to be in no particular order, and that's because I'm going to be starting with the star of this entire set, to nobody's surprise, the green Shoto Kazama Tamer. The generic ability to give any Digimon piercing, but more importantly, blocker at the end of the turn, and for the Vortex Warriors cards, they can be unsuspended, is incredible, especially for three costs, in addition to having a super low threshold to give you memory almost every single turn. This card spun up an entire new archetype you've probably heard me talk about a thousand times on this channel at this point, which is Mother D Reaper Control, using the Mother D Reaper Digi Egg card for a huge 15,000 Digimon blocker for essentially just three memory. It also brought other control decks back to the forefront of the game, things like Royal Knights as well as the Seven Great Demon Lords. Seven Great Demon Lords in particular feels very strong knowing that they have a huge blocker up at the end of every single turn. The great thing is that this guy is only a rare card, which means it's going to be much easier to get your hands on him than say a super rare or secret rare for the set. The best part about Shoto though is that now everybody in the West gets to feel the pain that I did whenever I fought these decks at locals. Now we can suffer together. So now with the really obvious choice out of the way, let's talk about some of the other cards that probably weren't on your radar. The first one of these is going to be the blue level 3 Otamamon. This guy, just an uncommon card, but very, very good. Not just because of his effect, but also what he evolves from. He's the first dual color Floodgate card printed in the game. In a time where lots of decks are using Digicross and will be using Digicross in BT19 in order to reduce the play cost of all their Digimon, Otamamon feels specifically aimed at all of those decks. Suck it, Ancient Gururumon. And just knowing that you can use him on either blue decks or green decks or decks that mix both of them, Examon, this card feels specifically very strong. Also, he's a Nature Spirit card, which I haven't really talked about very much at all, but the Nature Spirit deck seems like it's one of those decks alongside the Liberator stuff that feels like it's going to get more support as time goes on. And because it exists among many of the colors in the game right now, I think it's blue, green, yellow, and black, and they can all digivolve into each other, it feels kind of cool that you can use this in that as well. The next Digimon I think you should have on your radar is not technically even a Digimon, it's actually a Digi Egg, and that is going to be the level 2 purple Yamon. Yamon's inheritance effect says that if you have 4 or less cards in hand, you can just evolve into any dark dragon or evil dragon that's in your trash. Based on the cards released only in EX7, it feels like the heavy metal Dramon and purple Yuki based deck seems a little underpowered right now, but if I think about cards in the past that seem really similar to the Yamon, the first one that comes to mind is the Baomon that's used in the Fenrir Lugamon decks. And I think that we can also all agree that having only four cards in hand seems really detrimental to trying to find the right cards to evolve into. So just having your trash as a completely separate hand in this case seems really strong. And so the potential of this Yamon effect means that the Heavy Metal Dramon, while not looking great right now, is only a few new cards away from being amazing. 
And while we're on the subject of potential, I want to talk about a card that I think will not only be great in the future, but it's actually really good right now. And that is the super rare, one of my favorite Digimon, Hexablabon. Hexablabon supports Security Attack Plus One, the new Ice Cloud ability, which allows you to do battles in a completely different way in the game, as well as preventing your opponents from suspending their Digimon, and has some Tamer hate in it. While he does have a heavier evolve cost at four than some of the other level sixes we've seen in the game, all those effects, I think, kind of warrant that. But honestly, I don't think that evolve cost means so much when Blue has some of the best evolve engines in the game. When you look at things like Piledramon or the Galaxy cards, which if you haven't seen my video in the Gal Finals featuring the Galaxy deck, I implore you to take a look at that. It will blow your mind what that deck can do. Hexablamon feels like the kind of card that is either usable as a mainline level six for a deck or is just nicely splashable in anything that is blue. Some of the more common pairings I've seen with Hexablamon include Hexablamon plus Magnamon X Antibody or Hexablamon plus Mirage Galgamon, both fantastic cards in their own right. And if all of that wasn't enough to sell you, then the alt art for this card is also just absolutely sick. And the last card I recommend you get your hands on from the EX7 Digimon Liberator set is probably one that you won't agree with me at first, but let me see if I can sell you anyway. And that is the Mardi Gras themed EX7 Secret Rare Vortex Resonance. Now the odd typing for this card means it's much more difficult to use than any other normal option card requiring you to have three colors on the board. But if you have a Digimon or Tamer with a Liberator trait, then you don't have to worry about any of those colors at all. The effect itself also doesn't seem amazing. For a three cost, you can search the top four cards of your deck and then grab a Digimon with the Liberator trait among them, add it to your hand, and then after that, you can evolve at cost minus four. I know this card bears a crazy resemblance to the EX2 blue card, which is printed years ago at this point and was only a rare at that time. So you're probably wondering like what gives? Like why would this be any different? First of all, X Antibody Protoform taught me a lot about option cards that have higher rarities in EX sets. And that is always get your hands on them because they, if they're not useful now, they will become useful in the future. And so in my mind, I thought to myself, well, what could make this better than a regular blue card? And what popped into my head was if they print a Tamer or Digimon to let you play Liberator options with a play cost of, or excuse me, a use cost of three or less, then this card becomes amazing. You get free search and evolve for zero, as long as you have that card that plays it on the board. And so again, while I, I recognize that is incredibly speculative, we know that option cards printed in EX sets before have been very good, and the effect of play it seeming so possible, I feel like this is like one card away from being an amazing secret rare. But that's just my opinion. You can disagree. If you think what I'm saying is complete bunk, I won't be mad at you in the slightest. But I believe. And so with that, we're going to wrap this video up. Those are my top five cards to grab from the EX7 Digimon Liberator set. What do you think? Do you think there are any cards that are left out on this list or any cards you would add to it? Let me know in the comments below. Also, while we're on the subject, are there any decks you're actually looking forward to from this set? I particularly thought Love Hina, Love Hina, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's, that's, that dated me right there. Anyway, <laughs> I particularly like the Lynx Dragons deck alongside the Safagamon deck. When you just take the starter deck cards and just add it in to a few cards from the set, you have something that's pretty powerful. Anyways, folks, I'm going to get out of here. Before you get out of here, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Only smiling today because I went to the dentist and I know I got my pearly whites. Oh, the yellow light here actually doesn't doesn't help. Dang it! <laughs>